Now let's talk about carbohydrates. So we often heard the word carbohydrates, but uh, carbohydrates actually ca came from two words. It's actually from the word carbo, and we have hydrates. Carbo from the word carbon, and we have hydrates. When we heard the word hydrates, that, oh, you need to be hydrated. You might get dehydrated. So hydrates means you need to drink water. So it means water. So we have here H2O. So carbohydrates came from carbon and water. Sometimes we call carbohydrates as hydrates of carbons. Okay. All right. Sometimes you call it hydrates of carbons. Yes, here, hydrates of carbons. And also, um, usually the ratio of the carbohydrates is we have 1 is to 2 is to 1. So, uh, the 1 here is the ratio of the carbon, and 2 is the ratio of hydrogen, and 1 is the ratio of oxygen. So notice that carbohydrates are made up of organic elements which are carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Now, what does this uh, ratio mean? So if we have 6 carbons... If we have six carbons, then we have to multiply that here. And we have six hydrogen. And then if we have six oxygen. So our product would be C6H. Six times two, that is 12. And O6. So that's, that's it. So later, we will know the formula here. But usually, I'll write na lang, the formula of uh, carbohydrate is we have CnH2nON. So, the number of carbohydrates, okay, and uh, if we have the number of carbohydrates which are 6, then we have uh, 12 hydrogen and 6 oxygen. So, N here is the number of atoms. Okay. Now, so much for that. Let's go to the next page. Okay. So, carbohydrates, uh, it's very important to our body. It's one of the most important uh, bio and organic substances in our body. And it is produced by photosynthetic activity of the green plants. Okay, so when we eat uh, the fruits of our plants, then that that uh, food that we eat will be uh, decomposed or will be degraded into and converted into sugar. Okay, and carbohydrates are also referred to as saccharides. Saccharides. It is also referred to as saccharides. It came from the word saccharum, meaning sugar. Okay, so sugar. So which means that our carbohydrate is also a sugar. Okay. Uh, and this is sweet taste. Okay, this is because of the sweet taste of carbohydrates. So that's why they call it sugar. And aside from that, aside from the property of carbohydrates, uh, carbohydrates also uh, used as storehouse of chemical energy. We have the glucose, the starch, the glycogen. They are sugars, in which later we will know. And these sugars, okay, these sugars will be converted as. Since they are already monosaccharides, now they cannot be converted. But these are sugars. Then, aside from that, carbohydrates support structural components in plants and even in animals. 
that also it is part of the structural framework of our DNA and also for our lipids okay they are linked to lipids and or also carbohydrates are linked to proteins also because carbohydrates we have carbohydrates and oh uh, it's made up again it's made up of carbons and the lipids the proteins and or no our dna or and rna are also have carbohydrates are also also have carbons and the carbohydrates supply those carbons okay. all right and the oxidation of carbohydrates provides us energy to do work okay we know that and also we have here okay so that's it the formula of carbohydrate is this one CnH2NON or we can also simplify it when since we talk that carbohydrates are hydrates of water so we can uh, use this formula CN times H2O then multiply that with N okay but this formula is the same with this formula just that the second formula this formula give uh make it obvious that carbohydrates are hydrates of water and n is the number of atoms it's, okay we also have it here polyhydroxyaldehydes or polyhydroxy ketones or compounds that produce such substances upon hydrolysis okay so notice here okay we have two groups of carbohydrates we have the first group is the aldehyde group okay aldehyde group so aldehyde group is a functional group in organic chemistry and so if we have aldehyde the functional group is that is a carbon atom when a carbon atom connected to oxygen and we have the r group r group and then we have the h group so that is aldehyde okay that uh, notice so that's why here here the cho is an aldehyde group okay so this is a uh, glucose this is glucose uh, it has it has six carbons one two three four five six so it has carbon six carbons and notice that in the in carbon one carbon one is the aldehyde group and then carbon two three four five and we have carbon six okay so there are six carbons in in a glucose so if we are going to write the formula of glucose that would be if there's six glucose carbon then we have how many hydrogen we have 12 and we have how many oxygen we have six okay so c6h12o6 is the formula of our glucose it is the it is a simple sugar it cannot be converted to another form of sugar because it's already simple it's the simplest one already and then aside from that Aside from aldehyde group, we have also the ketone group. Okay, the ketone group. Ketone is also a functional group in which the carbon the carbon atom is connected to okay to a double bond O. Then we have R and R. So a carbon uh, a ketone group is connected to one oxygen and two r group okay notice here okay notice i'll change the weight okay this one as you can see here the first this in a ketone group the second 
carbon. The carbon 2 is the our ketone. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, this is a ketone also. Okay, so we have 6. And in the second carbon, uh, we form the double band O. So that's the our... So example of that is our fructose. Okay, so fructose, if we have... Now let's write that one here. If we have fructose, if, if we have 6 carbon already, we have C6, and then we have how many hydrogen? We also have 12. So we also have 12 because 6 times 2, that's 12. H12, and we have O6 also. So, notice that our glucose and our fructose has the same formula. Just that our fructose is a ketone group and our glucose is an aldehyde. Yes, they have the same formula but not the same functional group. Uh, fructose is ketone and aldehyde, and glucose is an aldehyde. So fructose mm, and glucose are both simple sugars. Late, uh, simple sugars are the sugars that uh, are monomers. They cannot be converted to another form because they are all, they are already simple or they are called monosaccharides. Now we have classification based on the products of acid hydrolysis. So we have, okay, we have types of carbohydrates. We have monosaccharides. Okay. We have monosaccharides. Okay, here. Monosaccharides. So it came from two words again. Mono, which means one. Okay, one. And then saccharide is sugar. So it means one sugar. Okay, so this is a simple sugar and it contains a single polyhydroxyaldehyde. Okay, single. Glucose is a monosaccharide. It's a single polyhydroxyaldehyde, while the fructose is a single polyhydroxyketone. It's, uh, it's only one. Later on, Okay, so the monosaccharide cannot be degraded into simple products uh, because they are already simple. And then we have pure monosaccharides are water-soluble, okay? So sugar are water-soluble, water white, and then crystalline solids. Okay, so that's what we have observed about the sugar. Then we have disaccharides, okay? Disaccharides... Uh, from the from two words we have di two which means two, and then we have saccharides which which means sugar. So it uh, the saccharides are made up of two two sugars. Okay, so it contains two it contains two monosaccharide unit. Okay, so if we have disaccharide, these you know this aldehyde this glucose. Then we add another glucose, so that's disaccharide. Yeah, okay. Or we have uh, glucose and then we add with fructose, we combine with fructose, so that's disaccharide. It is a combination of two monosaccharide units. And the bonding there is covalent bonding because glucose monosaccharides are covalent. Okay, they are. Uh, they are organic compounds, so they are covalent. The bonding that happen there are covalent. And then we have crystalline and water-soluble substances. Upon hydrolysis, they produce monosaccharides. Okay, so we have the dis disaccharide. When we hydrolyze that one, when we the breaking produces two monosaccharide units. Okay, the monosaccharides are the sugars that our body needs. Okay, 
So, again, we cannot, because our body cannot process disaccharides or other uh, sugars that are more than one, more than one monosaccharide unit, so we cannot process them. That's why we have to convert it into a monosaccharide. That's the time because our body can only process monosaccharides or the simple sugars. So that's disaccharides. And then we have, okay, so let's go. The, the, another classification is we have oligosaccharides. So it, contain, it contains when we have 2 or 10 monosaccharide units that covalently bonded. Okay, that's oligosaccharide. So that's long. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then we have 2 or 10, 2 to 10. That's oligosaccharides. And the saccharides are most common type. We have trisaccharides. We also have, okay, we have trisaccharides. We have two sugars. And then we have tri we have three we have tetra we have four example of trisaccharide is raffinose and tetra is sta stichose and free oligosaccharides other than the saccharides are less common in nature so these oligosaccharides are uh, not common usually found associated with proteins and lipids and complex molecules that serve structural and regulatory functions so they served in the protein and lipid uh, structure. Then we have the fourth category of carbohydrates is the polysaccharides. So these polysaccharides is the most common. It consists of 10 of thousands of monosaccharide units covalently bonded. Okay, that's too long consists of 10 of thousands of monosaccharide units covalently bonded okay and we have okay example we ha uh, this has two classifications we have homopolysaccharides homo means the same uh it which means that uh, only single monosaccharide that is present we have glucose plus glucose plus glucose plus glucose and we also have heteropolysaccharides if heteropolysaccharides then uh, we have glucose plus fructose plus glucose plus fructose again that's it so uh, different uh, the glue the monosaccharide is not consistent so that is what we call heteropolysaccharide the one of example of this examples of this are hyal hyaluronic acid, heparin, chondroitin sulfate. And example of homo, we have glycogen, cellulose, starch. Okay, this glycogen and cellulose they are uh, important for the structure, uh, protein structures. Okay. And then we have high, hybrid macromolecules. We have proteoglycans, glycoproteins, and glycolipids. Okay, so we have hybrid. Okay, so the, so the monosaccharide, the sugar is crossbreeded or combined with other bioorganic substances like protein and lipids then we also have derived carbohydrates those were carbohydrate moieties have undergone some reactions converting them into other products so we have sugar acids sugar alcohols the oxy sugars and sugar amines okay now let's go so we have carbo carbohydrates that have the general formula. Okay, again, this one is our formula. And varies from 3 to 8. So from 3 to 8, it means that uh, carbohydrates uh, contains at least, at least 3 carbon atoms. So carbohydrates that has 3 carbon atoms is the smallest unit of carbohydrate and that uh if we have at least three so 
the group to they are grouped together according to the number of uh, carbons they contain. So we have uh, three here. We have three carbons. Okay, we have three carbons, three oxygen, three times two. That's six. So we have six hydrogen. Okay, so this is what we call trios. And we have four. If we have four, we have tetros. Uh, if we have five, we have pentose and so on. We have hexose, heptos, and octose. Okay. Now again, this is either an, aldo, uh, an aldehyde or a ketone. An aldon, aldose, okay, we call it aldose. If it is an aldehyde, we put ketose if it is a ketone. Now we have this one. This is aldoses. Aldoses because it's the because of the aldehyde group. Okay. Now if M is three, if M is three, what uh, do we call this one? If M is three, if M is three, then how many carbons? All in all, we have five. So that is a pentose. Okay, that is a pentose or aldo pentose because we uh, we put the name aldo first and then this one aldo pentose. Okay, what if so now? What if it's six? Uh, what if uh? This one is six. The M here is six. Then that would be a that would be an aldo octose. Okay, because it's an uh, it's an aldehyde. Now let's go here to ketosis. Ketosis because of a ketone group. You see, you see it, class. This is the R group, and also the uh, another R group. So ketone. In your organic chemistry, we have. See, oh no 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 oh I should have like C double bond O we have R we also have R we put as a apostrophe here because the R here is not the same with the R here okay now if we have here if we have here if N here as you can see, CHOH, if N here is 4, how should we name that one? So it's if it's 4, we write keto tetros. So we write keto tetros. That's it. That's how this that's how you name it. Okay, the presence of ketone group is usually indicated by using the ending you lose. In naming the sugar later we will know this one too okay let's go now all right so we have here classification of monosaccharides classify each of the following monosaccharides according to both the number of carbon atoms and the type of carbonyl group present okay first thing to do is you count how many carbon atoms are there so here, how many carbons here? Okay, let's count one. Okay, notice that this one class, this structure is a Fisher projection. Okay, Fisher. So we have, but the intersections here, 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 they are comp uh, they are carbons. It's the carbon that connect connects this bonds one two three four so if we have let's count here one so this is the first carbon the second carbon two three four five class when you count the number of the number of carbons you start with the aldehyde group you start from the top so one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we have five carbons here. And if it's five, we call it five pentose. Okay. So we have pentose. Okay, let, I'll write that one. It's a pentose. 
Now, let's identify the carbonyl group. The carbonyl group is aldehyde, so we write it aldopentose. And then for the For number two, we have how many carbons? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six. Okay, it's six. And then we have hexose. And since it's a ketone group, so we have ketohexose. Ketohexose. I'll write that one. Keto. Okay. Okay, now what about letter C? We have how many carbons present? One, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's six again. So we have hexose and we have the carbonyl group, which is aldehyde. So we have three, right? Aldo hexose. And letter D. We have one, two, three, four, five. We have pentose. Okay, this is a ketone group. So we have keto pentose. Okay, so that's it. That's how how that's how you name uh, carbohydrates. Okay, so now we let's go. We have classification of monosaccharides. Okay, we talked about it uh, already. We have triosis. Triosis, so uh, they are made up of three. Okay, three carbons. And we have pentosis, so this is five. Five carbons. Okay, five carbons. Okay, so that's it. Now we have the parent member of the family of monosaccharides. From them emanates the other members of, of the monosaccharide family. Oh, you see class, the triosis is the smallest unit of monosaccharide and it is called as the parent member because from it, from the smallest uh, unit, forms... Uh, eman forms and emanates the other member of monosaccharide family. That's how uh, we have four, we have tetra, we have pentose. So they came from triosis. And then the final form of carbohydrate into which all carbohydrates, regardless of their complexity, are degraded in the body during carbohydrate metabolism. Oh, okay. So the triosis is the... A final form of carbohydrate in which all the carbohydrates even how long even if it's polysaccharides it's made up of thousands thousands of carbons but then again they will end up into triosis uh, for the, our body to metabolize to use okay and then the simplest the simplest monosaccharide, monosaccharide uh, from aldehyde group is what we call the glycerol dehyde or the or what we call aldotriose. Okay, so aside from it, we have the name glycerol dehyde, and we also have the simplest ketone from ketone group. A triosis from ketone group is dihydroxyacetone. Class, the D at <clears throat> It's important that we know how to write a Fisher projection of this uh, of this sugar. We have aldotriose or the what we call the glyceraldehyde. Now let's write that one in a Fisher projection. So we have, it's important that when we write it, we write the carbonyl, carbonyl group like aldehyde or ketone at the top. Okay, so we have 
the carbon here, carbon, and then we have the oxygen, and we have the hydrogen. Then, since it is aldo trio, so we, get, we will know that it has three carbons. Okay. So, we will have here, we know that at the center or the vertex is the carbon group. Is a carbon. And then we write, since it's already three, we write the CH2OH. And also, we, it's important when we report the stereochemistry of the molecule, it's important to note where the OH or the H uh, side is located. So if we have the D glyceraldehyde, we, it means that it is the OH group is on the right side and the other, the H group is on the left side. But if the OH group is on the, okay, I'll write it here. But if the OH is on the other side and H is here, it is an L. The stereochemistry is L, glycerol, the high. So here, that's why we have D because it's on the OH group is at the right side. So that's it. That is aldo trios. Now, what if we write keto trios? How would we do that? Okay. So let's look at this one. Okay, here, so this is glyceraldehyde. It has three carbon carbon atoms. So this is aldotetrose. Oh, aldotriose. And it is D because the when we report the stereoisomer or the stereochemistry of our glyceraldehyde, we'll look at the carbon atom that is the farthest far or next because in this case it's, it's next to the carbonyl group so oh is on the right side so that's why it's d and here the enantiomer of this one is the l glyceraldehyde l because it's on the left side now we have here the d and l okay so one two three four one two three four Five. Okay, so these are the enantiomers. Uh, this is the enantiomer of our D ribose. So it's D. This is D ribose because it, it the OH is on the left side, on the right side. Well, here this one is L ribose because the OH is on the left side. Then we have here arabinose. D, D arabinose, L arabinose, D silos, and L silos. So, uh, what's important here is that you can identify the D and L stereochemistry of a molecule. The D is on the right and L is on the left side. Now, let's go back. Okay, so we have also pentosis. Okay, the pentosis which we have discussed earlier. The silos, the ribose, and then we also have ketosis. So if it is, uh, it's the pentosis and aldo, we have aldehyde and we have the ketos, okay, keto pentosis, uh, it's a ketone. So we have the, the ribulo, ribulose and the cellulose. So as we can see, class, the ribose, the ribose is the is an important uh, 
and is an important molecule in our DNA or RNA. That's why we say ribonucleic acid and deoxyribonucleic acid. So that's a ribose. Then we have the classification again of monosaccharide. Then we have hexoses. We have six. Okay, so how would you identify this group? This is a D glucose. Yes, this is D glucose. Now, the most common of all monosaccharides, we have aldohexoses and we have ketohexoses. So for ketone, we have fructose, and for the aldehyde, we have the glucose, and we also have a mannose. A mannose is found in certain bacteria, fungi, and plants, and it is converted to usable glucose in the body, but has no real physiological significance. Okay. So, um, we have the glucose. Its uh, solution is often used in hospitals as intravenous source of nourishments for patients who cannot take food by mouth. Okay, as you can see, this is uh, dextrose. Dextrose. So, dextrose is also called glucose. So, the main component in our, or the solution in the dextrose, what we call dextrose, but that's really dextrose. Dextrose is a sugar. It's a glucose sugar. So, that's a glucose actually. That's a uh, it is given to animals or to people who cannot take in food because maybe they are just going to vomit it and it cannot be used by our body since it was vomited. So we use this one through the uh, through uh, through the award dextrose, what we call dextrose. Okay, so that's why the doctor gives you uh, dextrose to you if you cannot, uh, if you are in a severe not pain, severe sakit na, because if you cannot take and you cannot eat food, you will not eat it, you will just vomit. So the doctor will give you the dextrose. Hello, it's it's an alternative food source okay so that's it for this lesson